Unit 8, Imperialism and Expansionism Aligned to the Tennessee U.S. History Standards. Learning Objectives. Assess the causes of American imperialism in the late 19th and early 20th century. Compare and contrast the arguments of interventionists and non-interventionists. Describe the causes of the Spanish-American War and the outcomes of American imperialism. Compare and contrast President Roosevelt, President Taft, and President Wilson's diplomacy goals. Big concepts. Westward expansion closed the frontier. Americans looked overseas for new markets to sell manufactured goods and for raw materials, natural resources. Many Americans wanted to spread democratic and moral ideas to lesser peoples and cultures. This was part of the social Darwinism movement of the Gilded Age. Interventionists and non-interventionists argued about the role the United States should have in the world. Newspapers published yellow articles encouraging expansion. In 1898, the United States went to war with Spain and won. America gained many territories from Spain. Vocabulary. Imperialism, the most important vocab term. We need to know what this is to understand the unit. It's a policy of ex extending a country's power and influence. Now you can extend this power and influence through diplomacy or military force. The United States is surrounded by oceans, Pacific and Atlantic and the Caribbean. So if it wants to expand and control markets overseas, it's going to have to build a large navy. There were two groups of Americans that supported imperialism or did not support imperialism. Interventionists favored intervening in other countries and gaining other territories. They supported imperialism. Senator Albert Beveridge is a famous interventionist. Non-interventionists, they do not support imperialism, and the famous writer and satirist Mark Twain did not favor American expansion overseas. Some of the first territory that we acquire, we acquire and annex Hawaii in 1898, extending, extending U.S. territory into the Pacific. Hawaii was an important place to allow for the provisioning of American ships traveling to Asia. It's also a fertile ground for American missionaries, religious missionaries, and it's a source of sugarcane production. Samuel Dole, if you think of the fruit company, the bananas, etc., encouraged pineapples, encouraged U.S. annexation and the overthrow of Hawaiian rule and then the annexation by the United States government of Hawaii. And the naval base Pearl Harbor will be constructed there. The Spanish-American War, the war between the United States and Spain. Why is there a war between the United States and Spain? Well, Cuba, a large island off the coast of Florida is occupied by Spain. The Cubans want independence from their colonial oppressors. American newspapers encouraged war. President William McKinley sends a new warship that we've constructed, the USS Maine, to Cuba. The USS Maine explodes. This is kind of the final straw in the United States deciding to declare war on Spain. And it is a relatively easy conflict for the United States to win. And Theodore Roosevelt volunteers as a, creates a Rough Rider regiment and becomes a war hero in Cuba during this conflict. So we have a lot of political cartoons of the time demonstrating America's desire to expand overseas and what we have here is Uncle Sam and William McKinley looking at a bill of fare, a menu of various territories that we will acquire. 
uh, during the Spanish-American War. We get a little piece of Cuba, Guantanamo Bay, Puerto Rico, and we the Philippines will be in American territory until after World War II. Here's some uh, popular imagery depicting the chaos in Cuba, anarchy, Spanish misrule. The, there was a large feeling that Spain was misruling and abusing and forcing Cubans into camps where many were dying and they won independence and the United States fought for its, its independence from its uh, colonial predecessor, England. And so a lot of Americans had sympathies for the Cubans and wanted them to gain their independence. Further, here's Uncle Sam protecting the Cuban people. And we can see how Spain is definitely depicted as the villain in the American press. And the Americans are depicted as the heroes. Here is the ship, the USS Maine. It was one of our newer naval vessels that was sent to Havana Harbor to monitor the situation in Cuba. Now the USS Maine is going to explode in the harbor killing uh, many of the sailors on board. It's uh, written about in the press. The press kind of use it as a catalyst to and kind of get President McKinley to decide to, who did not want to go to war with Spain. They kind of uh, pressure and get the American public to support a war with Spain. And so McKinley eventually uh, asks Congress to go to war with Spain. Here's Theodore Roosevelt, uh, depicted here on the left as a photograph of him and his Rough Rider Volunteer Regiment. Uh, a lot of popular portrayals of him leading a charge up San Juan Hill in Cuba, becoming a war hero. Yellow journalism. Newspapers led by two newspaper tycoons, William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer encouraged war with Spain. They exaggerated news stories to sell more papers. It made the public want conflict. So there was a lot of fear mongering. There was a lot of exaggerated tales of what was going on in Cuba, really portraying Spain as, as the enemy. And these media tycoons felt like they could use this situation to profit off of by selling papers. So after the war, the US gives Cuba its independence, but we gain Guantanamo Bay and other economic incentives through the Platt Amendment. And we also gained the Philippines, but the Filipinos felt like they would gain independence uh, from the United States once the war had ended, because the Philippines was a Spanish colony. So they felt like once Spain was gone, the United States would grant them in their independence, but this did not happen. So they fight a brutal revolution against the United States. So the United States is fighting and suppressing an independence movement. The U.S. wins and keeps the Philippines as a territory. Non-interventionists pointed out the uh, war crimes that were committed, as you see in this photograph here, by American soldiers in the Philippines. President Roosevelt, he was an imperialist and he wanted the expansion of American power and his focus was on expanding American power in the Caribbean and in Central America. With his policy was called Big Stick Diplomacy. They wanted to keep the European powers out. Many European countries were practicing their own expansionist and imperialist policies overseas, and the United States wanted to keep Europe out of its own backyard which was one of the motivating factors for Roosevelt's corollary and which was an addition to the Monroe Doctrine 
and here is Roosevelt with his big stick, and his big stick is implemented with the United States Navy. We're going to build the Panama Canal. Theodore Roosevelt is going to use our influence and our, our new naval power to gain territory. We promised the Panamanians independence in return for land to construct a canal so that American ships can travel through the Caribbean to the Pacific Ocean instead of going around South America. So a large portion of time is cut off from trips. So it helps our Navy and it helps our shipping and commercial interests trade. All of this is possible with Theodore Roosevelt's big stick diplomacy. The use of our naval force to negotiate. And he's famous for saying, speak softly, but carry a big stick. And on the right is Theodore Roosevelt sitting in one of our new naval ships off the coast of Panama. After Theodore Roosevelt's presidency, we have William Howard Taft and his form of imperialist diplomacy was called dollar diplomacy. And we wanted to use our economic power to negotiate with others. And a lot of this was focused in the Caribbean and Central America. Americans uh, in banks and, and businesses investing in uh, these, these third world countries. And after Taft, we have President Woodrow Wilson, and he had a expansionist policy known as moral diplomacy, where we would only assist other countries who he felt were morally on the correct side, and he would not negotiate with countries he felt were morally incorrect or oppressive to their people. So the United States is really kind of intervening a lot in its own backyard, supporting certain governments and not supporting others. And it's all for economic and military gains for the United States. Let's look at our timeline. We have 1898 is the Spanish-American War and the annexation of Hawaii. That's all under President McKinley. After the war, the Filipinos rise up against uh, their new occupiers, the United States, and they fight an insurrection against the United States for many years. Theodore Roosevelt starts his presidency in 1901 following McKinley's assassination. And two years later, we start the Panama Canal. 1908 is Taft's presidency. 1913 starts Wilson's. And in 1914, so 13 years later, in one of the greatest engineering feats in American history, the United States finishes the Panama Canal. And that is it for Unit 8.